Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be building a 12 volt battery box for my kayak so I can run my depth finder and charge my phone and cameras and whatnot. The box I'm using is a plastic ammo can from Amazon that is supposed to be waterproof. It has a rubber seal around the lid that keeps water and dust out when it's closed. I'm going to have two outlets mounted at the top of the box where everything can plug in. There's going to be a standard 12 volt outlet like you'd find in your car and two USB ports. The two outlets are connected together by the wiring that came with them and then the end is soldered directly to the battery management system or BMS. The BMS helps to protect the battery from overcharging or discharging as well as allows you to connect the outlets that you're going to be using. The 12 volt outlet allows you to plug in your accessories as well as charge the battery. I did end up installing a balance lead to charge the battery since the charger I have kept burning out the BMS I ordered from Amazon. So to do this, you're gonna need a plastic ammo can, the outlet pack that comes with the mounting bracket and wiring harness, a BMS, some 18650 battery brackets, some 18650 battery cells, and some nickel strips to connect the cells together. For this project, I'm using 18 2.5 amp hour cells with groups of six arranged parallel than the three sets arranged in series. This will provide 15 amp hours of power, 12.6 volts at fully charged, and 11.1 volts at nominal charge. Many of the lithium batteries on the market currently use 18650 or similar cells to build the battery that you see, but they are typically run in a four cell series configuration that creates a nominal voltage of 14.4 volts. Most marine electronics can handle the higher voltage without any problems, but it is important to always check your equipment to ensure that it is compatible before investing hundreds of dollars on your battery. I'm just using this for my kayak and verified that 11.1 to 12.6 volts will work for everything that I'll be powering. The battery brackets are made out of these plastic pieces that each hold two cells and are completely modular. They snap together and can be arranged in any configuration that you might need. After you have built the top and bottom brackets, you need to arrange the cells properly for the configuration that you need for your desired voltage. For my battery that is having the two outer groups of six with the positive end on the same side and the middle group facing the opposite direction. After you have the cells arranged properly, then you fit the top bracket over the cells holding the battery together. To connect the cells together, I'm using this rechargeable spot welder that I got from Amazon. I'm going to use it to weld these nickel strips directly to the individual cells. Before you start welding the batteries together, it helps to measure and cut all the strips that you will need ahead of time since the nickel comes in a roll. The number and length of strips that you will need will depend on the number of cells and configuration that you are using. When cutting the strips, it is important to make sure that four of them are long enough to reach the correct points on the BMS. Because of the configuration that I went with, I have to make one of the strips long enough to run from the positive end of the battery pack along the side to the correct point on the BMS. The welder is easy to use. Just line up the strips across the cells, press down on the strip with one of the welder leads, holding it down onto the cell, and then press the other lead down about a quarter inch away from the first lead until you see a spark. It is important to make sure that on the positive side, you don't weld through the insulation into the negative side of the cell and that you keep the strip lined up properly while welding it down. After you get all of the rows of three welded together, it's time to weld the sets together. For this step, it is critical that you weld the sets together in the correct configuration. On the bottom, I have the cells from the positive side of the battery welded to the middle set, so on the top, I will need to weld the cells from the negative side to the middle set. If I weld the positive end to the middle on the top side, it will close the circuit and cause the cells to explode. So I'm going to take the longer strips on the top side, and I'm going to weld them straight across the cells on the negative side to the middle set. And then I'm going to use the shorter strips to connect the two rows of positive side together. Do not allow the positive set on the top to make contact with the other two sets and do not allow the negative side on the bottom to make contact with the other two sets. 
If done correctly, this will give you a three cell series that produces the desired 12 volts. Next, I'm going to attach the BMS. To do this, I'm going to connect the lead from the negative end of the battery to the negative point on the BMS and the positive end to the positive point. The other two leads should line up properly from there. To connect the leads to the BMS, I'm going to use a spot welder just like I did with the cells. After the BMS is attached, it's time to connect the wiring for the outlets. To do this, you just need to solder the red wire to the positive charge discharge port and the black wire to the negative charge discharge port. Now that the battery is built, I need to get the box ready. To do this, I'm going to use the bracket that came with the outlets to outline where I need to make the holes and then I need to drill out the holes. After that, I'm going to wrap the battery in bubble wrap to help protect it from drops and impacts and then place it inside the box with the wires sticking up at the back of the box. After the battery is in the box, I can install the outlets. To do this, I placed the bracket around the holes and then inserted the outlets and used the nuts that came with them to secure them on the inside of the box. The reason for placing the battery in first is because the outlets sit too deep into the box for the battery to fit past them. After the outlets are secure, you can connect them to the battery using the red and black wires. The pins on the outlets are labeled positive and negative, so you just need to plug the wires in accordingly. Then using the screws that came with the outlets, secure the bracket in place. Once it's all put together, there should be enough room at the top of the box to store your keys and wallet while out on the water so they remain dry and safe. One thing about this design the way I did it in the video is that the USB port has a blue LED that is always on when connected to the battery. This will always be draining the battery. To prevent this from being an issue, you can easily install an on-off switch in line on the negative side between the battery and the outlets. The only thing left to do now is to test it, and as you can see, the Garmin powers up with no issues. If you're interested in building one of these boxes for yourself, I will leave links down below to all the stuff I used to make this. And if you don't want to build your own battery, you can also just use a 15 amp hour battery that fits in the box. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.